my mother was a school teacher and I was brought up, but we were expected to learn, my sister and I both, but we wanted to, it was, that was fun. Um, I just knew that, I just knew it was expected that we would go to college. She is really smart. She's very well educated and she's very, very bright. She's still inquisitive and has a desire to, to see what makes it all tick. My philosophy is, is to make every day count in some way, try to be happy and pass it on. It was kind of odd that her coming to her spiritual roots the way she did because she wasn't a Catholic and she wasn't a Mormon. I was a non-Mormon, then I was a non-Catholic, and you know, it was I just went through life being non this and non that, and then I finally decided I, I better settle down and become something. She ended up being an Episcopalian and ended up being um, a woman priest early on in the process. Having gone back to seminary at the time she did and uh, getting through that and, and, and usually using that for her, for the benefit of, of humanity really. She was in her 60s and she went to seminary in Austin, Texas and it was really hard. It goes back to my three years in boarding school. At that point in time, I, w I decided I wanted to be a, a Catholic priest. I wasn't a Catholic, but that's okay. I was gonna be a Catholic priest someday. And so uh, that was dormant for years. And then the bishop asked me to get on a committee for something, and I said, oh, I'd be happy to. And I really took it on. I mean, I just took it on like man. And I said, as a matter of fact, I've, I've often thought of uh, that's the way it ought to be done because I think I'd like to be a priest too, or I said something like that publicly, and I couldn't believe I said that. And, but it was just, it kept trying to come to the surface, and so after that I thought, well, maybe it's time I settle down. And I, I did have a calling, I, there's no question about that. When she wrote her book, she said she was going to kick back and enjoy life, and within months, she was president of the trust, Board of Trustees at the University of Miami, which was a huge job. I think there were a few, few men that didn't want to be chairman, so they decided, well, let's let Mrs. Weeks be chairman for a couple of years. And, and I worked hard. I went to 127 meetings one year. She did work awfully hard as a trustee of the university, as a, as a chairman of the Board of Trustees, and she still works hard for the university. And she does also for the University of Utah. And they bought a hospital and she was in charge of all that. I mean, this was huge stuff. We purchased a hospital, and which is, it's a, it's a great thing, but it's, it's, took up a, it's taken up a tremendous amount of time for the board, plus a lot of money. <laughs> she just will not stop. I, I've tried to get her to slow down a little. We're trying to retire, <laughs> but we haven't gotten very far. Marta is physically extremely strong. She's um, a black diamond skier. She's just a great skier. I couldn't believe her. And, and, and everybody just amazes me. And she gets out here and she exercises a lot. I love to ski. I love to swim. I have a, I have a picture in there of me doing a jackknife off of a high board when I was, I, I guess I was about to, 12 years old then. And we ride a bicycle, try to ride a bicycle 15, 20 minutes, maybe once or twice a day. And she's just active in everything. And just and, and puts her whole uh, life and soul into what she does. I just, I've always loved outdoors. And, and in Utah, of course, there was, we lived out in Holiday, and that was before there was any traffic, before there were any houses, hardly. And, uh, and I had a horse. Many years ago, we were skiing in North Carolina. And we rented boots and skis, and we had to carry them back to our place where we were staying. And I couldn't do it. I had to sit down. And I'm younger than Marta. And Marta says, oh, Sandy, I can carry those. And she picks up my boots and my skis and hers, and she just strides up the hill. And I'm sitting there feeling like, oh my gosh, what a loser. I've always liked sports. I mean, that's just, I just love it. Uh, and, you know, I swim in my pool and I, when I have the time. We are slowing down a little bit. We, we got to get a little more golf in because we're not, we're not playing golf. We, we, uh, we got some golf in in North Carolina this summer, uh, five or six games up there. And then we played the TPC up in, uh, in uh, Palo Verde 
and uh, which is, you know, we, we played that famous 17th hole, which I parred. <laughs> I gotta get that in there. We went to the same church and met there, and, and of course, and, and knew Austin and uh, knew Marta. And uh, Austin was, was not, she was in ailing health. My wife, I thought, was in pretty good shape, and he died on, in January, and the, the day of his funeral, my wife went to the hospital. And I had met Carl through the church, because we'd been going to the same church for 20 years. I didn't know him well at all. I'd only seen him around, been on, I think, one committee. And uh, after, I was at church one day and someone said, what are you doing tonight? It was Sunday and I said, oh, I, in the meantime, I'd become a trustee of the University of Miami. I said, I have to go to a meeting and I was tired of going out alone at night. And they said, oh, well, you know, Carl Wolf, he, car he takes people around, He'll, he takes women and, and escorts them to functions. If, if you want, call them up. And I, I said, oh, I'm not going to do that. Somebody said something. She said she needed somebody to take her someplace and somebody suggested it. <laughs> I was a good driver. <laughs> Two weeks later, he called up and he said, hey, I hear you might like a ride sometime once in a while. And I said, well, yeah, as a matter of fact, I was going out that night and I said, I've got to go to a dinner tonight, would you like to go? And uh, he said, sure, and he came and picked me up and pretty soon we were dating. I was married for 61 years. And she was married for 54 years. And we finally got to talking about it. I said, well, you know, this is kind of stupid. <laughs> and the next thing I knew, he asked me to marry him. I said, yeah, that'd be great. And we were very happy. We were she didn't get along very well. Wonderful to be with her. I mean, it's so, she's such an outstanding person. I really appreciate being awarded this uh, honor this evening. It's, it's been fun being here with everyone. And uh, I don't think they're aware that I, I am an alumni in a sense, uh, even before this, because I, I spent one quarter uh, when I was at Stanford uh, catching up on some credits. And uh, it was fun being here. Uh, I mean, at the university, uh, but I, I do appreciate this award, and it's, it's just been a delight to be part of the Alumni Association, and thank you so much.